Hello friends, I am Dr. Deepak Garg. I am an orthopedic surgeon and today we will discuss uh, grade 1 chondrosarcoma or atypical cartilaginous tumors. So these are the low grade locally aggressive high line cartilage producing tumors. So based on the location if they are located axially they are called chondrosarcoma grade 1 and if the same tumor is located in the appendicular skeleton they are called atypical cartilaginous tumors if they are located in the medulla they are called central outside the medulla they are called peripheral and if there is a pre-existing lesion they are called secondary if there is no pre-existing lesion they are called primary so WHO has a classification and these two are the most common scenarios central atypical cartilaginous tumors that means the central means they are located in the medulla atypical cartilaginous tumor that means they are located in the appendicular skeleton and secondary peripheral atypical cartilaginous tumor secondary means they have a pre-existing lesion peripheral means they are located outside the medulla and atypical cartilaginous tumor means they are located in the appendicular skeleton so central atypical are they arise centrally within the bone without a benign precursor and secondary peripheral atypical cartilaginous tumor arise within the cartilage cap of a pre-existing osteochondroma. So in this video we will talk about the central ACTs or chondrosarcoma grade 1. So if we talk about the location they arise in the bone formed by endochondral ossification. So most common locations are femur, pelvic bone, humerus, tibia, ribs and bones of the hand and the feet. So 75% of the patients are aged between 21 to 75 years and the mean median age is 49 years. We talk about the etiology. So etiology is unknown but uh, there is an association with the somatic mutation in isocitrate dehydrogenase gene IDH1 and IDH2. So 50% of the primary and 78% of the secondary they show the this mutation and risk of secondary malignancy in patients with multiple enchondromas if the tumor is located in the hand and feet it is 15% if it is located in the long bones it is 46% and there is a very high risk if the tumor is located in the pelvis. And if there is a somatic mutation of IDH1 and IDH2, the risk is even higher. So patients are usually asymptomatic. Some patients present with the pain and the swelling and most of the times it is an incidental finding. So if we look at the x-rays, so we can see that there is a lesion in the distal femur. We can see this is a geographical lesion and this is a lesion with the calcifications and uh, the co cortex is normal there is no cortical scalloping and there is no periosteal reaction if you want to uh, look at the characteristics on the x-rays so these are usually the lytic lesions with geographical distribution and uh, usually there is a typical cartilaginous calcification seen usually the popcorn calcification and uh, there may be associated with the cortical scalloping and 50% of the tumors are located in the metaphysis uh, one third in the diaphysis and rest in the epiphysis region. If we look at the MRI then we can see that this is a T1 and this is a T2. So we can see this lesion there in the cortex. This is a low to intermediate signal on T1 and a very high intensity on T2 because the cartilage is hydrophilic. It has a lots of fluid in it so it is very highly intense on T2 weighted images. If we look at the contrast images they show the heterogeneous moderate to intense enhancement and enhancement can be septal and peripheral rim like. So as a rule of thumb we can see we have already seen that there is a very high risk of uh, uh, chondrosarcoma if it is located in the pelvic region. So as a rule of thumb cartilaginous tumors in the phalanges are most often enchondromas whereas cartilaginous tumor in the axial skeleton not in the appendicular skeleton in the axial skeleton are probably chondrosarcomas. So if you look at these parameters the tumor is larger in size with cortical remodeling with deep scalloping and there is an enhancement on dynamic 
contrast MRI within 10 seconds of start of arterial enhancement then probably we are talking about a typical cartilaginous tumor over and chondromas. Diffusion weighted MRI and PET CT they do not allow reliable differentiation between endochondromas and atypical cartilaginous tumors. Now uh, if we have a patient with these findings and we are confused with, between endochondroma and endochondrosarcoma then should we go for biopsy and when should we not go for a biopsy and uh, consider observation in the patient. So we will discuss about when to go for a biopsy in a cartilaginous tumor in our next video. So suppose we have taken a biopsy so we talk about the macroscopic appearance so these are usually the translucent bluish gray or grayish white tissues or uh, yellowish white chalky areas of calcification are usually seen. Now uh, microscopically they, they show abundant highline cartilage matrix and they have a lobulated growth pattern and lobules are regularly shaped and vary in sizes. The lobules may be separated by the fibrous bands containing small vessels and the lobular growth pattern can cause a typical cortical thinning represented by radiographs by cortical scalloping. So we should know about th these two terminologies encasement and entrapment. Encasement pattern means there is a deposition of the bone surrounding the tumor lobules. So there is a all around the tumor lobules there is a bone. So this is a sign in enchondromas. This means the benign tumor. And entrapment is the tumor lobules permeate and entrap the pre-existing lamellar bone trabeculae. That means there is a presence of tumor around three sides of a normal trabecular bone. So that is a sign in ACTs or chondrosarcoma grade 1. Usually it is difficult to appreciate in fragmented curated specimens or in biopsy specimens. So if we talk about the IHC, the tumor cells strongly express S100 and are negative for brachyurea. Now we have a uh, taken the biopsy sample and micro macroscopic and microscopic appearance and IHC basis it is very difficult to differentiate between the enchondroma and chondrosarcoma grade 1. So in molecular pathology we can go for IDH1 and IDH2 primary chondrosarcomas we have already seen that 50% of the primaries and 78% of the secondary will show the IDH1 and IDH2 mutations. IDH1 are the most common and the location is PARG132 position and IDH2 is located on PARG172 position. So the differential diagnosis are enchondromas. So the ACTs usually will show higher cellularity, irregular distribution of cells, binucleated cells, presence of entrapment and absence of encasement. We have already seen that. Presence of more than 20% myxoid changes of the matrix, absence of mitosis and severe nuclear atypia because that will show higher grade of chondrosarcoma. Now if we talk about the prognosis, now we have already diagnosed the chondrosarcoma grade 1 or atypical cartilaginous tumor. So in the prognosis, they are locally aggressive tumors, they behave locally aggressive, usually metastasis is very rare. And uh, if we uh, talk about the local recurrence post-surgery, so it is 7.5 to 11% in chondrosarcoma grade 1 or ACTs and it is 0% in enchondroma, means there is no recurrence. About 10% of the cases of recurrence, they progress to a higher grade. And reported overall survival rates, 5 year survival rates are 87 to 99% and 10 year survival rates are 88 to 95% in chondrosarcoma grade 1 or ACTs. Now if we talk about the treatment, long bones, we should go, we can consider curatas or with or without adjuvants but in the pelvis we should always go for wide local excision. Although in the long bone also we can go for WLE. So this was about the chondrosarcoma grade 1 or ACTs. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.